2025 is shaping up to be quite the year for LLMs, large language models. Until now, it's been mostly AI first companies and startups leading the charge with LLM adoption. However, we're beginning to see larger enterprises and traditional businesses get on board. The versatility of these tools is undeniable and they have the potential to revolutionize nearly every single industry. That said, one of the biggest hurdles in deploying AI products, especially within larger enterprises, isn't the technology itself. The tech often demos very nicely, showcasing some impressive capabilities. Instead, the challenges lie in supporting the implementation of this tech, especially post-deployment, ensuring that the system consistently delivers on value. This is where monitoring and evaluation become critical. Enterprises need peace of mind that their AI system will operate reliably even at 3 a.m. in the morning handling thousands and thousands of customer inquiries. They also need to know that these tasks are being performed accurately and ethically and that they align with evolving regulatory requirements. In this video, I'd like to walk you through a four step framework that will help us orient and think about the evaluation of LLMs. And secondly, we're going to walk through a fairly straightforward case study that's just going to make things a little bit more concrete. First, let's cover some of the core concepts in the process of evaluating LLMs. This framework is one that I borrowed from Lance Martin over at Langchain. They have a great series on evaluations. I'll link to it below. There are essentially four main components that we have to consider. Number one is the data set. This refers to the list of items or interactions that we are evaluating. Think of this as all of the runs that your LLM performs in production or examples of engagements an LLM might have with a user. Number two is the evaluator. This is the mechanism that we're going to use to determine whether a run was successful or not. It acts as the benchmark or the standard for assessing the LLM's performance. Third is the task. This is the specific objective that we want to accomplish with the LLM. Think of this as the particular function or the job the LLM is expected to perform during the evaluation. And lastly, we have the results analysis. This last step involves bringing everything together to analyze the outcomes of our evaluation. Here we determine whether the LLM has performed as expected and evaluate the success of the test. One of the cool things with LLMs is that you can do so much with them from sentiment analysis to labeling to translation but that also introduces some complexity when it comes to evaluating them as well there's a lot of different options that you can choose from in each one of these components the key takeaway here is that evaluating LLMs is not a one-size-fits-all instead you need to carefully tailor your approach diving deeper into each one of these components to find the right configuration for your specific LLM and goal and workflow Let's talk a little bit about tooling. There are a couple of good options available out in the marketplace. If you look at any good LLM market map and focus in on evaluation and observability, you'll find plenty of great choices. These are tools that I want to explore in future videos, so stay tuned for that. But for this particular example, I'm going to keep it simple and leverage OpenAI's developer dashboard evaluation tool. It's a low code, straightforward and simple way to get started with these evaluations and is going to serve as a jumping off point for this type of process. Let's talk a little bit more about the example that we're going to walk through in this video. I've pulled the movie review data set from Hugging Face and I've subset it down to 50 examples. We have movie reviews alongside with an indication whether or not the review is positive or negative. If it's positive, it's labeled as a 1. If it's negative, it's labeled as a 0. This serves as our ground truth. These are labels that have been made by humans. The curators of the data set have already done that work for us. Our task here is to evaluate how well an LLM can match these labels. In other words, does the LLM agree with the human label for whether the review is positive or negative? I'll include a repo link below so you can access the data set and all the prompts that we're going to be using in this example. So with that as a precursor, let's head over to the OpenAI dashboard and start walking through the evaluation. We're going to head over to platform.openai.com and you can click here on dashboard and head over to evaluations before we start our evaluations just a high level overview of what we're going to do number one is we're going to upload our data check it out make sure that it's okay 
Number two, we're going to set the evaluation to generate responses. This is where we want an LLM to actually generate a response for the items that we're evaluating. Sounds a little funky, but I'll explain it to you in just a bit. Third thing that we want to do is set up our test criteria. So this is how we're going to measure whether or not one of the runs is successful or not. And then we're going to review our initial evaluation run. And then as a last step, we are going to compare different models. So we're going to compare how Turbo 3.5 does versus GPT-40, for example. So let's jump into it. So again, we're here in evaluations under dashboard. We're going to select create a new evaluation and we want to upload a file. I've already uploaded this data. Again, you can access it from the GitHub repo. So I'm just gonna bring that in and take a look here. And what you can see is that we have a review of a movie and then we have the label. Again, if it's one, it's positive. If it's zero, it's negative. So you can look through some of these as well. And I've only uploaded 50, but this data set is considerably larger if you would like to do that. So now we're going to go to the next step. And here is where we're going to have the evaluation generate responses for each one of these roles. So if you head over back to the repo, I have the system prompts here. So you can grab this, copy that, and drop it here in the system prompt. And then we're also going to have a message prompt as well. And that's going to be analyze this review. And I'll walk through this in just a bit. Okay. So the system prompt is you are an expert in analyzing the sentiment of movie reviews. If the movie review is positive, you output a one. If not, you output of zero and only output one or zero for the responses, nothing else. So that's the system prompt. And then the user prompt for each one of the runs is analyze this review. And then we drop in the text. So we're dropping in the review from each one of these roles. The cool thing about this is that this is dynamic. If you do curly brackets, you can dynamically pull in any one of these variables. So in this instance, we want the text, but we're going to be referencing the label a little bit later. So let's just leave that there. And then I get to pick the model that I want to generate with. So in this instance, I want to see if I can get away with using a cheaper, faster model. So let's just go with GPT 3.5 turbo and let's go to next. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a test criteria. So this is how we're going to gauge whether or not the output from the model is correct or not. And so in this particular instance, we're simply going to do a string check. So we're going to see if the response from the model matches the ground truth. So if GPT 3.5 returns one and our ground truth is one. Okay. That's a success. So we do that with string with string check, but there's a lot of different options that you have here. And you can also combine these also in the same run, which is really interesting as well. But for this particular example, we're just going to look at string check. So check if response, and this is from the run, which is the sample should be the sample output text response generated by the model is ground truth equals the ground truth and our ground truth remember is in the item label so it's going to check if these two match and i can add that so i've set that up and as i mentioned you can add other criteria here as well we won't do that for this particular example but that's it's nice that that's another option here so we're going to go on next and now we can name this and we can say um rename this here so we can say movie review Let's add that there and I'm going to just do a quick review, make sure that the data set is there. The variables are good. Uh, I've got the right model. I've got the right test criteria and I'm good to go. One thing that I encourage you to do is to test the evaluation. This will run the evaluation on the first 10 rows. And it's just sort of a, a quick way to make sure that you have everything properly configured because you know, if you submit a 1000 row evaluation and you've got something that's messed up, you don't want to find out after those thousand runs. 
So you can check that and we can see that we have some outputs from the model here, which is, um, you know, the output says here zero, but I have a one, that's a fail. But all these other ones are pass, 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 fail. And, it, and it's for the first 10. It's a good check. The other cool reason to do this is because this allows OpenAI to evaluate how costly it's going to be for them to run this evaluation. If, if it looks like it's reasonable, they give you an option to share the results from this evaluation with OpenAI and make it free. So I'm going to click on that. And pretty much what you're doing is you're just sharing your data, the analysis and the runs with them, and it's going to help them make their models better. This isn't sensitive information. This is just for educational purposes. So I'll um, do it for free. Otherwise, you would have to calculate how your inference costs for all of these runs. So this is the input tokens, the output tokens, and then you'd have to go to the pricing page and you'd have to see what the price is for that particular model and then multiply that by the number of rows that you have in your evaluation data set. So this probably wouldn't be that costly, but, but still, if you have a big run that you wanna evaluate, um, if, the, if they give you this option and it's not sensitive data, I'd say take it. Okay, so now we're gonna run that. The cool thing here is that you could just set it and forget it. They're, they'll send you an email uh, when the evaluation is done. This isn't a lot of roles, so it should be pretty fast. And immediately I can see the outputs from this particular run. So for GPT 3.5 Turbo, the pass rate here is 94%. So in 47 out of the 50 cases, GPT 3.5 outputted the same label as my ground truth. And if I want to inspect that a little bit further, I can go here and check out some of the outputs from the assistant and then see whether or not they match my ground truth. And if I just want to look at the failed items, I can do that as well. And I can see that these are the three that failed. And in this instance, the ground truth was negative, but my assistant said positive. And in these two instances, the ground truth was positive, but my assistant said zero or negative. And these are all failures. So let's say that 94% isn't good enough. I need to get this as high as possible. How can I check whether or not another model is better what's the type of lift I get by using a more sophisticated and also more costly model. So you can go here and click on add run and you can change a couple of things here. You can change the prompt. So maybe I can get the score higher if I modify the prompt a little bit more, both on the system and the user side of things. But for this particular instance, I want to see if a some more sophisticated model would make any difference. So in this instance, I'm going to go with GPT-40, uh, uh, OpenAI's flagship model, and I'm going to leave everything else the same. And I'm going to click on run, and it's going to take some time to do that. But again, because this is a small data set, this should run relatively quickly. Now, as you can see, GPT-40 scored 96% here, 48 out of 50 passing so one better than gpt 3.5 turbo that gives you information maybe it is worth it to get this type of lift maybe 3.5 turbo is good enough you can do multiple different types of run to find that out you can test other models as well and of course you can export this data so that you can look at this in your own system and dig into it a little bit deeper if you want all right so go check out OpenAI's evaluation tool i think it's a really easy way to get started with evaluations. As I mentioned, there's some other evaluation tools that I want to test out. Let me know which tools and use cases would be interesting to you. But more importantly, just make sure that evaluations are a key part of your consideration. If you're doing anything with LLMs, you have to be proactive about it. You have to make sure you have a systematic approach to evaluating your LLMs on a continual basis. It's just going to help you avoid a lot of headaches and also make your product better and better as more models become available. So evaluations have to be a key part of your overall workflow. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, any comments, drop them below. You can also find me on LinkedIn and X and would love to hear from you. Cheers.